Hi everybody, welcome back from vacation. Um, this week we're talking about disturbances to an ecosystem and we're gonna focus mostly on how humans e impact the ecosystem. So these are the objectives for this week's lecture. So what you should learn this week. Um, and this part doesn't have to be written in your notebook, okay? Because this is the vocab that's already on Quizlet. So you should have looked at this at some point. And the objectives are just that you know what we're learning and you're gonna list the disturbances that can occur in an ecosystem. You should be able to explain how humans can impact the ecosystem and define what an invasive species is and tell us why it's a problem. So first, let's look at the organization of the Earth systems. So our planet, when we look at our planet, we can divide it into different systems. And the four main systems are going to be air, which would be your atmosphere, um, geosphere, which is the land, the hydrosphere, which is the water, and then the biosphere, which is living organisms. Um, our book focused on these and organized it in that way. Um, so humans can impact each one of these systems. So humans impact the environment in many ways. Um, mostly when we impact the environment, we're leading to problems, all right? And we don't even necessarily mean to cause all these problems, but it just happens because we don't always use resources appropriately. So these following ways are the ways that we're gonna impact the environment. What we do, we um, have deforestation, right? So we cut down forest. Um, habitat fragmentation, meaning we divide habitats that animals live in. Um, we over harvest things, so we take too much of the resources. Um, we introduce invasive species and we cause pollution. So deforestation first, and here's a picture over here on the left. That's a picture of what a forest used to be, but is no longer there. So deforestation is the process of um, clearing the forest. What happens is it's going to take away the habitat, and it's not just the habitat of the forest, like thinking the trees, it's like think of all the organisms that live on the tree, in the tree, in the bark, in the soil, that when you take away the tree, you're now removing um, all these places and nutrients that the forest would originally have. So it's, um, it's gonna impact that whole area, all right? It's going to decrease the amount of species that live there. Um, the next one is habitat fragmentation. And here's a picture over here on the left that shows that original large habitat and how it's split into two smaller ones. And if you look at the picture above it, you can see, see all like the roads? Well, first see this big clearing here. Like, so you have a big clearing in the middle and on the outside you have the green of the trees. So those used to all be one giant, this area and this area, my yellow isn't great, right, on this picture. These used to be two, those two areas used to be one area, but then they did this in the center and cleared it. And now we have additional fragmentation occurring here because all these roads, right, all these break it into even more kind of separate areas. So habitat fragmentation is when you um, have a barrier, like a road or a clearing that divides the habitat, right? The organisms can't get across anymore, so it's gonna decrease the habitat that they have to live in, and it decreases the carrying capacity for most of the species because the habitat can't support as many species as it was before, right? You're gonna end up losing genetic diversity, and remember, genetic diversity is um, the differences in the DNA of a species because those species can no longer interbreed with each other so you have like two separate breeding groups and it increases genetic diversity and, and I mean decreases genetic diversity because they can no longer share their genes does that make sense we're making small pockets of animals rather than letting the animals mate all together um, next is over harvesting hunting and poaching so this is when um, Populations are removed. Individuals are removed from a population, but faster than they can be than they can be replaced. So we're taking and killing or taking out more than the population is able to, like, have babies, and it's going to kill the population slowly. So um, we take them out because of food right this fish this is fishing for food um sport think of like hunting or fear think of like the yellowstone wolves thing that we talked about where the wolves were taken out of the um, yellowstone because people were scared of them right it's not even necessarily a true or rightful fear it's just fear right um, some examples would be the bison swordfish cod and tuna um there's tons more examples the wolves right that was over harvesting or hunting and poaching 
Um, it decreases genetic diversity and species biodiversity. The genetic biodiversity because there's less animals for them to mate with. Um, the species biodiversity because sometimes we take out a whole species and we get rid of it and now we don't we have less species going like in an area does that make sense especially like things like the bison there just aren't that many of them anymore next invasive species this picture on the left is a beautiful lionfish right um, they look nice but they are super invasive in our area invasive species are animals um, fungus plants that aren't native to the specific location so they don't belong there they were brought there by humans either intentionally or unintentionally they tend to spread because there's a lack of competition so since it's not their native area nothing is going to fight with them for that space um, and nothing ends up killing them or um, keeping them in check right it causes damage to the environment um, to our economy and to our health so it's going to decrease species biodiversity because sometimes these invasive species like overpopulate to an extent that they wipe out all the native species because the native species were actually um like being eaten and stuff like that by the normal flora or fauna like the normal animals that are around so pollution is kind of a big catch-all right so when we look at pollution we're talking uh, first we need to know that a pollutant is anything that is human created that's harmful to the environment okay we're going to call that a pollutant and examples would be um, the runoff from a farm sometimes there's too much nitrogen or phosphorus in the fertilizer in a farm and it can run down and sometimes you'll see like lakes next to a farm that are all green because the fertilizer gets into the lake and it fertilizes all like the plant life in the lake and has it lived too much it makes too much of it and it blocks out all the sunlight for the rest of the like lake river whatever area of water that you have um, chemicals from industry and agriculture right if you see all the chemicals like in that picture that's oil right in the water like that's pollution and then um, just trash and sewer is also pollution the pollutants indirectly cause three things it causes global warming it causes biomagnification and it causes ocean acidification which we'll talk about in the next three slides those things in particular so first global warming is the fact that the overall temperature on the earth is slowly increasing right it increases because we have co2 and other greenhouse gases that are caught in the atmosphere and the heat isn't able to radiate out because it can't get through those gases so it's called the greenhouse effect when that happens and the picture has a really good picture of it over here um, this causes the earth's atmosphere to heat up and it decreases all types of biodiversities because organisms um, live in a very specific temperature range right and they're not tolerant to big changes from that range so they can't live in certain areas and it ends up um, killing them and then additionally it's melting all of the ice caps not all of them but some of them which is causing oceans to rise which is taking away habitats on the land all right next is biomagnification biomagnification is a little bit weird but it makes sense it's when a toxic substance becomes more concentrated as you go up the food chain so you have like a whole bunch of like that picture a whole bunch of little fish the krill okay krill are getting the mercury from those two processes from the mining and the coal plants okay krill are eating the mercury now the salmon eat the krill right because that's what they live on now the salmon are getting the mercury from the krill and then the tuna eats salmon that already have the mercury from the krill in them and the tuna get the mercury and then the shark eat the tuna right and their mercury level increases and increases as it goes up the food chain right so it magnifies within the food chain um, this causes a decrease in genetic diversity of a species because you're going to have death of organisms right so animals end up dying from all that mercury or from whatever pollutant that they're eating um, it happens in that last slide it happens a lot you'll hear about DDT um, it happened because it was killing like it was getting inside the birds and then it was um, killing their eggs their ability to have like hard outer shells on their eggs um, it was a big one that happened so that's why they changed like um, the stuff that was made out of it I don't know. next ocean acidification um, in this picture you have on the left right so the left side I guess it looks like that if I go that way um, is a coral that's healthy and then you have the bleached coral bleached coral is just dead coral right it just looks white because the organisms that make up coral is dead um, 
what happens is carbon dioxide, which we said is a greenhouse gas, right? The carbon dioxide gets into the atmosphere and when it's in the atmosphere, it actually dissolves into the ocean, right? And once it's in the ocean, it lowers the pH. And when you lower pH, you make something more acidic, right? So the oceans become more acidic. Right? Once the ocean's more acidic, um, the animals aren't tolerant of that acid level, right? So as the pH decreases, it becomes acidic and the animals can't live in that. The animals actually end up dying, right? This is really difficult for um, oysters and other shellfish because the acid actually weakens their exoskeletons, right? It weakens the stuff that their shells are made out of the, and it's gonna end up killing them, right? So ocean acidification is killing giant amounts of coral reefs which then affect all the fish that live in the coral reef because now they don't have the coral to live in anymore, right? So that's the other one. Um, that's it for today's lecture, okay? Make sure you check your notes. Um, go back through if you need to and listen to it again and let me know if you have any questions.